Hey guys, welcome back. This week we have a very special Beyond the Torch. The Beyond the Torches are when we go out and visit people and places and things and take it outside of the studio. This week we get to visit Mike Peterson and he's the inventor of the Nikwala. I think you've seen it in my studio. So we were lucky and honored to visit him in his studio, which is a few hours away from us. And we got to see all his cool tools. I want to remind you guys that we have a very exciting workshop coming up on the 18th. That is with Rook Glass. Rook Glass is going to do some sparkle pendants. It's eight hours live streamed and you guys will be able to ask questions, get to meet them. And for those of you guys who want a discount, please use the promo code. You've been rooked and you'll get 25% off. Additionally, anybody who signs up for the Rook workshop will also get the Maestrino package for 30 days included with that. And you'll have access to all of the website including all of the previous workshops as well. So please check that out. I want to thank our sponsor, Mountain Glass Arts. They have continually supported the glass community and the YouTube videos. They're an amazing company, super easy and friendly. So if you're interested in glass blowing or learning more, please feel free to uh, call it Mountain Glass Arts. Let them know that you saw the video and I know that they'll take care of you and give you a little discount. Speaking of discounts, if you tell Mike Peterson at Nikwala that you saw the video, you'll get a 5% discount on the Nikwala, which is an amazing deal. It's super generous of him. So yeah, thank you, Mike Peterson. Thank you, Mountain Glass Arts. I can't wait to show you guys what's in store for today. I get a lot of questions about how to work with me and how to come out to Berkeley. So if you guys are interested in a private glass retreat, please check out the website and learn more about the private glass retreat. You get to come out, stay in the Airstream, 24 hour access to the studio. Please send me a message and we can work out all the details and the dates and everything like that. I want to give you guys one more reminder before Uh, we get into the video and that's a reminder that you are lucky to have a body and you're lucky to be able to do what you want and that you're blowing glass and remember that remember to get up every day feel grateful for all the blessings that you have in your life thankful for all the community and family around you and i really appreciate you guys spending time with me watching these videos it really means the world to me thank you guys for giving me someone to be hi Welcome to the glassworking shop. Well, it's a special day in the shop today because I have a special guest. This is Mr. Dustin Revere, Revere Glass, maker of the finest glassworking videos on YouTube. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Mike. Um, it's such a pleasure and an honor, I mean, to see the studio and you're not too far away, so it's just a couple hour drive and um, yeah, it's amazing. Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, thanks for being here. So we're going to start off going over to my experimental prototype chip stack kiln rig. And uh, Dustin's going to try his hand at assembling chips. And I think with Dustin's experience, maybe he'll see something I don't see. Maybe he'll find some magic that I, that I overlooked. So here we are at the experimental prototype chip stack assembly kiln fixture rig thing that I haven't come up with a cool acronym for yet, but who knows, maybe someday. So we've got four of my Marini slices from my previous assembly and pull, and they go onto this 99% alumina high temperature ceramic plate and they fit reasonably well, but not perfectly well. They've got a couple of little holes in them, a couple of little voids in them. And the trick here is going to be to heat them to fusing temperature, prevent them from sticking to the plate, and gently using the hand torch, I have both a Mirage hand torch and a a little Smith mini torch, using the uh, the hand torch and this special design paddle to kind of press them together, close up the voids, and uh, see if we can make a, a nice uh, section. Do you think we should have the yellow or the, the red on the inside? Um, whatever way you'd like to, to assemble them. I think I'm gonna this is, go with red. Yeah, that's the kind of the opposite way from the way my last one was, and it might be fun. Cool, let's try it. Yeah. And then 
this little lever. So up, in, down, release. Okay. So lever down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, raise the piece all the way into the stop, lower, and then retract the little forklifty thing. All right. Very cool. Very, and, very nice action, too. Okay, so then we come down and we're starting from cold mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. avoid shocking the chips, okay. which I think is probably a good idea. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, the temperature control is very critical on this, that it's important. We want to get the chips as hot as they can be so they fuse together nicely, but if it gets too hot, it sticks to the plate. Right. I'm going to start off here at 1500 degrees, which is just a little bit below boro softening temperature. So we're going to preheat the whole thing to 1500, okay. pull it out, mm -hmm. light up the Bunsen to keep the work surface hot, Yep. and then just work on fusing it together with the Mirage hand torch. Um, it's going to take a little while to heat this up. And while it's heating up, you know, it might be fun to go out in the shop and do a little bit of the machine shop tour. Yeah, let's check it out. Let's check it out. OK, while we're waiting for the kiln to uh, heat up, I thought it might be nice to give a little demonstration of the star of the show here in the machine shop. This is a Haas Mini Mill 2 that I use for Inquala production. It's nice to see that glass workers are finding it to be a useful, a useful tool. Yeah, I love it. I love mine for sure. So um, let's get over here and take a look through the window. This is a, a fairly serious industrial machine. And one of the nice things this machine does is that it has this electronic probe with this little ruby tip. When you put a workpiece in the vise, the machine needs to know very precisely, well, where is the workpiece? And now the, the probe is measuring, and the probe actually measures very, very highly accurately within a, a tenth of a thousandth of an inch. The probe is measuring the position of that block in the vise that allows the machine to know where my part is going to be when I put the part in. going to be making Inquala controller housings and this is what the part looks like when it's finished. It's a reasonably complex little part. Actually this is not finished. It's got a bunch of outside profile and outside holes that need to be cut but we're cutting the inside profile in this operation and it's uh, just hogged out of solid. Makes a lot of chips. So, you look in there, you see that there's a tool carousel containing all of the tools that are going to be used for this job, and the machine automatically changes tools. When it needs a new tool, it goes over and grabs a new tool, and it knows where the part is, and so it can accurately make the part. So, let's try this one again. Oh, wow. So what do you think? It's amazing. I, 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 what, what happens with all that liquid? Where's that liquid go? Well, all of the chips fall down into the bottom of the machine, and then there's an auger that runs along the bottom of the machine. At the end of the operation, I turn on the auger, and it dumps all of the chips into the trash can. Cool. Yeah, I haven't seen anything fully going, and it's it's really cool. Like, it was so many, you could do so much. You could make literally anything that you imagine with your ability to engineer and machine and glass. It's like, it must be overwhelming sometimes to be like, wow, I could do this, or I could do that, or, you know, like, there's so many ideas, right? Too many ideas, too little time, and having, having the power to make them, it just really, you know, it's, 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 tools give freedom. Tools give freedom to design, freedom to invent. Now that I have this tool, it opens up all these possibilities for, oh, I can make this, I can make that, I can make this. Okay, so 
While we're waiting for the kiln to heat up, might as well continue the tour out here. This is the office, electronic lab, computer lab, and a bit of a history museum as well. I mean, years ago, I used to take photography fairly seriously, and I've got uh, a number of photographs taken from places around the world. Uh, years before that, I was fairly heavily involved in music and owned a variety of different recording studios, recorded a whole bunch of bands. Some of them are actually really good. Some of them are astoundingly good. And I've got my little uh, hobby record company, loudroundrecords.com, if anybody wants to listen to any of my weird old music. And at one time in the music business, I was the last engineer on the Rhodes piano, which was what you would use if you wanted to have an electric piano on a, on a gig, have a portable, portable piano sound. And I was the, the last engineer working with the inventor, Harold Rhodes, in the 80s. Over here are some of the Marini pieces that I've been working on, some of the designs that were created using the Inquala, the multi-axis hot glass squeezer, and the uh, chip stack assembly fixture. Okay, so it's gonna be a little bit of a kind of a role reversal here where I'm gonna be the teacher and you're gonna be the student. That's all right, let's do and it. And hopefully you're gonna teach me something when you start working with the material and maybe see things that I didn't see. Mm -hmm. So first thing to start off with, you're already familiar with the uh, with the torch. So go ahead and get your, get your torch adjusted to the flame you think is gonna be appropriate. Okay. So uh, the procedure, you put that back on the, uh, on the stand there. So um, remember the procedure where, so you go in with it down, lift up, pull out, and drop back down. Okay. So open the kiln all the way to the stop, lift and remove. And now at this point, from this point on, you're losing heat, so we do not want to dawdle. So let's get the, get the Bunsen lit. And let's see what you can come up with to figure out how to fuse these things together. And the first step is gonna be just to get the chips to stick together so you can move them around a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's a good motion right there. The backstops are solid, so you don't have to worry about exerting too much force. I think these are stuck together. Yeah, you're... See if your, your whole stack is moving now, if you can get it to move around. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of loose. You want to get it away from the backstop as soon as you can, because the backstop obviously is preventing you from getting the heat on the edges, so once it's a it's a fused unit, you pretty much use the, the tool to move it away from the backstop. I typically just just do that. Okay. I mean, they're stuck together, so they're stuck together. Yeah. So now what you're doing, you should be concentrating on. There's a few little voids in the chips, unavoidable, unavoidable <laughs> little voids little voids and bubbles, and of course the, the center section doesn't match up perfectly. So the next step you're going to be concentrating on getting everything, getting all the holes filled. Okay. How does it feel to you? Yes, yeah, completely comfortable. Feels good, nice and soft. Tool seems to work great. I mean, this is, we're, we're getting to the point where where things are squeezing out here, Mike. Right, look how much more small it is. Yes, you have to balance out the side squeezing and the top squeezing. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing the top squeezing, it's good to have it away from the backstop. Yeah, when, when, you're, when you're doing the flat squeezing from the top, it's better to have it away from the backstop because the backstop kind of kills your heat a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
Now keep in mind, I'm sure you know this, and I'm sure you know what you're doing, but the sliding motion, if you're not careful, you can smear the pattern doing that. I mean, to me, it looks like everything is pretty much out of there. Maybe this little section Yeah, right here. we have, uh, you're still, th this is always the troublesome part right here at the outer edges. Mm -hmm. And we've got a few little holes, a few little, little bubbles, and probably need a little bit more top-down squeezing. Okay. Yeah, that looks like a nice uniform top surface. When you think you're ready, we'll flip it and put it back in for a little reheat and then work on the other side. Sounds good. Okay, so lift up, in, down, out. So, your first time through. I, mean, I think it's actually amazing. Um, super efficient, makes everything so much easier. Because um, I've, I've done this before in a very simplified, just like based off a of furnace working technique. The mechanics of this are, are really good. Really easy mechanics. I feel like it came together really nicely. It squeezed everything out. I got to get it back into a square shape. I mean, I think that this is, uh, if you're interested in putting together a Marini, this is absolutely a very helpful device. Like, well, it's, it's, it's not over-engineered in any way. It's exactly, <laughs> it's exactly what it needs to be. Simple sided in, kiln comes up. Yeah, it, <coughs> it, it seems like a reasonable way to do it. And of course, as you know, this is a, a kind of, a, it's based on the traditional Pastorelli technique mm -hmm. from hundreds of years ago in mm -hmm. the soft glass world. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't have, at least I don't have, a Boral Glory Hole. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, it's a small shop and a Boral Glory Hole is a big deal and mm -hmm. it's just totally impractical. And what I was trying to come up with was a way to adapt the traditional Italian technique to a small shop with less expensive, less elaborate equipment. Mm -hmm. And I think it's making really good progress. Absolutely, it was super easy to use. Like, so it felt very intuitive for me. Um, it, it felt like, like everything fits together really nicely. The action is really good. I haven't switched this on yet, but there is more sensitive switches that might be helpful if this- Absolutely, is I'm, really I'm, I'm planning on having a more automated kind of a safety switch yeah. so that as soon as you start moving the carriage, you turn off the bus. Yeah, like if you hadn't said, I forgot it was on because obviously it's my yeah. first time using uh, it. Ask me how I know about yeah. this problem. Exactly. I was like, I was like oh yeah, <laughs> and that, if I had done that, yeah. like it would have shot right up. And you, I was, you would have done the exact same yeah. thing I did going, oh! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As far as the technique goes, what I noticed that you did differently, and I didn't really coach you too much, I just kind of wanted to see what you did just on your own. It looked like you were a little more aggressive in the sideways pressing than I was, mm -hmm. and you got the thing fused together a little faster than I did. So, very interesting just to see how yeah. someone who hasn't, because I've done, you know, 10 assemblies with yeah. the machine, and very interesting to see how somebody with your skill approaches it for the first time. Okay, so the uh, this little kiln, this little Paragon Caldera kiln is kind of underpowered, yeah. and it takes a while to recover, uh -huh. but it does recover a lot quicker with the Bunsen under the work surface. Right. So we're ready to go again on the second side. Cool. We're up to 1546. Okay. And we're ready to go, so see if you can remember the procedure here, and let's uh, get that second side under control. So, get your forklift primed, down. Now up. Okay. Bunsen on. Yes, the the ceramic build surface does emit a little bit of dust. 
yeah. it all cold works off, but yeah. it makes it a little uh, a little tricky to kind of when you're looking at the surface and you're seeing the dust sparkling, yeah. it kind of gives the impression, oh no, I'm boiling the glass, but what you're actually doing is just sparkling the ceramic dust. Now, when I first started doing this technique, I was using the small flame right at the joints, trying yep. to concentrate my heat right at the joints. Yeah. And after trying that for a number of times, I discovered that, you know, it really works better with gentle overall heat. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that's what you went to immediately. Yeah, I mean, there was a little point, I'm not sure you noticed, there was a little point where I did experiment with that uh, in the last heat um, with the little uh, flame. And I don't think it's really gonna do what I wanted to because I need this to fuse all the way through. The little flame may trick me into thinking it's fused by just fusing the surface. Yes. I also made a, a little graphite tool, a little custom graphite tool that I could use in connection with the small flame to try to gently press the edges together. And I found that even if I tried hard, I always introduced a little bit of distortion. And the overall heating, the uniform heating, combined with the, uh, the, the, the reinforced paddle tends to give a really good fuse with very little pattern distortion. I usually do one side flip it, the other side flip it, then re then go back over and do two more times. And it looks like you're working a little bit faster and hotter. You're probably going to be done. Yeah, it seems like I'm going to be done in a second here. You're probably going to not go and do the third and fourth pass. I think that's about it, Mike. That feels okay. fully fused to me. Feels it like looks it's pretty like much you in a square. have fused them together. They're nice and square. Looks like the center is filled very nicely. All right, what do you want to do with it? Put it in a kiln or something? Um, let's just turn the Bunsen off right now, put it back in the caldera while the, while the annealing kiln is heating up. That was awesome, Mike. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah, and you know, my background is in the music business, yeah. and it's always interesting to see when an artist uses a tool that I've come up with, and well, yeah, it's, and... it's wonderful to collaborate with somebody, especially somebody with the experience you have. So thank you once again for coming. Yeah, no, it's like I seriously, that was like very easy on the body. Easy, there, there wasn't too much radiant heat. The action, you know, really nice, really easy, like simple movements. I mean, like everything that you seem to touch, it's a winner for sure, Mike. You know, <laughs> it's easy. It's great. Like I, I'm excited. I want to. I want to put some stuff in the squeezer. I want to make a bunch of these things. Like, it's cool, man. It's well, cool. so that now that you mention it, let's uh, yeah. may, maybe let's move over to the uh, other workstation and see what you can come up with on the squeezer. Sure. Okay. So we have our blank shape ready to go. So I'm gonna try this first by like a softer approach. Like I'm not gonna try to blow very hard and I'm gonna just put it in, try to blow yeah, soft. I, might, I think I might be able to improvise something to fix it in place for you, but let's see how you do with this. How did that feel? It felt good. It felt doable for sure. So like I got all sharp lines all throughout the middle, right? Mm -hmm. All those are sharp lines. So that's real good. If I, I can then take this piece 
and, and make it real sharp. So yeah, I think get you a squeezer in your shop, and I think you can have some fun with it. Yeah, well, both of the Marini and this this thing, but I think that we can get this into a pretty nice shape. Let's just try. It. First thing I'm going to do is try to pick off the bottom and lower the point of connection because there's there's a gap there. And then when I'm next time I blow into the thing, I'm going to have the bottom a little bit hotter and push yeah. push a little bit more. So yep. if I push a little bit more and have the bottom a little bit hotter, I'll be able to really have that clean. Oh yeah, crisp and the, shape uh, at the, bottom. the the adjustment, the way the the way the squeezer is made, the squeezing dies fit the base plate really, really well. Mm -hmm. And so it's possible uh, to get like a really, really sharp corner at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'd be looking for. This turned out really good. Almost, you know, like the way I imagined it, which is okay. really rare for the first time I try something. So yeah. like, this is like pretty much what I imagined. Like I could see maybe, I mean, but like that, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's like, I have a, a shape here. It's really difficult to make in glass. Really, oh, I can imagine that would be very hard to make by hand. Extreme, like almost impossible. Yeah. So to have this shape, now let's make a, 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 can, uh, a stem for it. We'll make a little piece out of it. Super fucking cool. As others have said, the possibility of blow-in molds with undercuts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, as long as you can open up your, your yeah. rig. Yeah. I mean, it undercuts. I mean, come on, that's super difficult. Cool. There we go. Piece number one finished. It's a hexagon. It's a hexagon. Yeah. So let's put it in the kiln. Let's put some on top. So I want to make a long shape now, a mm -hmm. long skinny shape, like the top of a pipe. Mm -hmm. So what? How do you think we should configure that? Did you want to try a triangle? Yeah. Okay, well, we can do that. But yeah, triangles. And there you have it. Mm -hmm. All right. We have a triangle? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Another triangle. And yeah, that's that's the form that it takes when I'm doing the solid work as well. Mm -hmm. That it's always kind of smaller at the ends and bigger in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I have to work on, you know, I'll get the, the initial shape and then refine it. But it doesn't, uh, at least so far for me, I don't end up with like a a perfect squeeze shape for a squeeze. Be an interesting little, interesting little assembly. Yeah, that's going to be a an interesting weld. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Super interesting shape. All right, you guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. And thank you, Mike Peterson, for being so gracious and inviting us to your studio. It's a beautiful studio, and we really loved seeing all the innovation and the tools that you were making, especially your Marinis, just like super on point. So thank you for checking out this video. Thanks to Mike Peterson, and we will see you guys in the next video.